And welcome to Get Another Cast, brought to you by Netrunners.co.uk. Here we have round three, game two of the July 2014 Worcester Manor League tournament. Myself on the left there, playing Jinteki, replicating perfection. And Neil on the right from Birmingham, playing Andromeda, with his shiny acrylic Andromeda indeed, from all his original shenanigans. So uh, I'm, an, I'm on a roll here, I'm on a roll. For those of you keeping score, and uh, for those of you that uh, have been watching the previous casts, I'm 5-0. Uh, I'm That's right, 5-0 you heard right. So uh, about due a losing streak, I think it's safe to say. Um, I've got an interesting hand there. I think I don't have a huge amount of ice, but I don't think I've got any agendas either. I'm pretty sure I've got a celebrity gift or two there from the looks of it as well, which is what I'm considering on getting my economy kick-started. Celebrity gift is one of these... Marmite cards. It's great, you know, you, you can't possibly refute its uh, its power, but at the same time, there are times where you really don't want to have to do this, which is to show your hand. Having said that, uh, you know, with a snare in there, Jackson Howard, two Caprice, it's an interesting, so no ice at all, in fact. So it's a weird hand. I probably shouldn't have kept that, I probably should have mulliganed and taken the chance, but uh, with no ice, that, <laughs> that causes some some aggravations, some problems. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here. I'm putting the, uh, the Nisei down. I'm going to res it before he has a, the chance to uh, announce any runs on HQ, and that is simply just to disincentivize. I think that's not a real word, but you know, we'll go with it. The uh, potential account siphon turn one. Um, he's going to play Desperado after having Shaw gambled, and are we going to see a pretty perfect Andy start here? Uh, obviously, there's a certain amount of vulnerability with my uh, centrals here. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm quite pleased to have the Jackson Howard. I think that's probably what clinched it for me. I don't think, in all seriousness, I would have carried on unless I'd seen the Jackson. There is ice coming, though, so that's reassuring. Uh, and he will play a security testing, I believe, there. Um, obviously, as well as a Desperado. So he's got all the money. I'm not sure if that's a security testing or if that is a... Uh, a data sucker. I'm not quite sure. Again, unfortunately, very glare. Much, much, much glare on the cards. Uh, I will install and draw two of Jackson. I think I may have drawn another two. I'm not sure, actually. Pass. But either way, I've got one, one piece of ice on HQ now, which is the important thing. He will have another look at R&D and see nothing. Uh, so I've been a little bit fortunate there already. But he gets a heck of a lot of value out of that anyway. And he'll take a lot of money for the privilege. I think that's a security testing down there. Uh, who knows, who dares to dream. Maybe I just need to move my usual table. I'll give it a go tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, so he will run the Jackson. I'll make him trash it for three. Because there's nothing to recycle, particularly at this stage. Looks like he's got a legwork in hand there. And, uh, oh, sorry, Kate Jones as well, which he'll install. And then put three on. So I've seen more ice and a snare as well. So HQ's actually quite well protected. Um, but I. So I'm actually going to set up here a remote server, and I think I may be looking to install and pass the turn. I've definitely got a Nisei there in hand now, by the looks of it. Early doors Nisei could be strong. He's going to run, and he's going to look at a Jackson Howard. No, sorry, Mental Health Clinic, which will trash for three. He'll go again and see something, but didn't uh, have the option of trashing it. So, you know, the economy assets here are definitely going to be the problem. If, with uh, free reign on R&D, he has the potential just to go in and trash the assets as they come. Mental Health Clinic obviously being quite an expensive one to trash, but still, nevertheless, not the best thing. And speaking of the devil, there is, in fact, Mental Health Clinic. So I spent a piece of ice on it, and I kind of didn't really have much of a choice there, given that Andy's economy is in such a strong position here, with a KT on the board as well. So I think it's the right decision. I'm definitely right here in icing up R&D. That's got to be the priority. And I will hedge fund. So, I mean, the economy is solid now. Uh, it's just a question of, can I actually generate enough ice to even remotely tax him here? He's going to play a fairy. That kind of economy. I mean, obviously, ideally here, I'd like to be icing up archives, particularly so I'm pretty sure he's got that security testing down there. He's taking the money for it. He's going to run R&D. Uh, he's going to see an Eli. That's not what you want on a central by any stretch of the imagination because, you know, he's got nothing better to do than just to click, click and have a look. And uh, he'd probably be right to, particularly because I've drawn both my snares in hand now. I've only got the two. Definitely got the Nisei there. I've got another Caprice, though, so I can make a remote server secure, potentially. It's just about whether I get the ice to be able to do that. There's no point giving him four attempts for free on a Nisei, and uh, 
I can't afford to do that myself anyway. I'm only on 12 credits. That's not exactly breaking the bank. Uh, so he will take some more money. I'm pretty sure that that's security testing archives. Almost positive it is. He's just got a huge amount of economy set up there. Uh, he will run the remote, and he will see another relay, which he doesn't have the option of uh, of clicking through, so I'll take my free credit. So it's a bit like resing the Eli for two. Oh, living the dream. Eli is definitely what you want to see on your remote servers, particularly on your Sunju's, your mental health clinics. It's so strong on, on that kind of situation. So it looks like I'm installing a Caprice there, and I'm getting ready to use it as a scoring remote. I'm not sure how good that is, but uh, I'm a little bit shy on ice here. In a deck with, I think, 18, 19 pieces of ice. I can't quite recall what stage it was at at this point. I think that's an ash as well. So a Caprice and an ash. He's got lots of money, so he could get in still, even with an ash on the server. But I might as well make him pay through the nose for it. Uh, he will sure gamble, so he certainly can do so now. And uh, he's just going to put money on Katie, presumably. He'll run archives. Oh, no, sorry, run HQ. Uh, see, <laughs> another Eli. It's a full house, three of a kind, rather. But uh, as a result, as soon as he sees a barrier breaker, all he needs is money, and he can start charging through my servers without, uh, with somewhat impunity. There, not an ideal ice mix-up. All clickable ice, all one deep, and as good as Eli is, and it is blooming good not quite what I need here. So I'm going to set up another piece of ice there. I'm low on credits. I've only got seven. And the mental health clinics only generate me one, which I'm spending on just getting the ice set up here. But still, no agenda scored. I've actually changed my mind, so I'm going to take another one back, I think, there, and put it on archives instead, just to stop his security testing. I'm not sure if that's too little too late, but I only just started seeing enough ice to really be in a position to do that. Um, as soon as you close up all your servers, though, security testing isn't that strong, in all earnestness. It's, it's really not. You either have to leave a remote server open for it, or... So, he's running archives, and I will res the Itchy with, with glee, particularly because he's got a data sucker on the board now, and he kind of has to, so he will use the ferry to get through. And as a result, now, he's going to be a little bit concerned about hitting nasty sentries without the ferry out. So it takes away a security blanket. Although it costs me... 5 to res, it stops the security testing stone dead. So that's not too bad. I've got time here. I've got a little bit of time. What I need to do is to take some money. So I'm installing into R&D, and I am think I'm probably going to take two. I'm not sure if that's an Ash or a Caprice. Probably Caprice. I think I've seen all three Caprices as well. And obviously I can only have one res at any one time, but I can install them wherever I want. And, you know, Mental Health Clinic can just sit there and me a little bit more money while I get ready to uh, set up a scoring window here. Again, with the amount of money he's got there, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we can but hope. So far, I've managed to uh, keep him out. Or at the very least, he's been unfortunate enough not to see any agendas on R&D. So he's going to start building up money on Kate Jones. Like I say, now security testing's pretty much out. That's understandable. He's going to parasite an Eli. Alright, it'll take a bit of time, but with the uh, data sucker on the board, he can still still get through. It looks like I've drawn up another uh, Nisei Mark II there in hand, so I've got at least two in hand. And uh, now he's making a vulnerability on, R and on HQ. That's a real worry. I think I've got more than one, actually. I think I've got a couple there. I've got two Niseis. I'm sure I've got another agenda at the very least. So I'm going to set up a a piece of ice on HQ, no point trashing the Eli yet. It's going to take a few turns yet. And it's already res, so hey. And I'm going to take some money and pass the turn. He's going to have to go and fetch some breakers here, unless he just wants to click click through the Eli and access R&D. Um, I don't think it would be worth resing the Caprice, I think it's probably more valuable on an HQ at this stage, given that I've got agendas there, and again it stops the siphon, which is even more important. Um, so that's the passport down, so he's got a, a code gate breaker, but there's not a single code gate in sight, so I, I don't know whether he's worried about uh, potential Inazuma there, but then I should just drop into the NAPD contract, so I'm seeing agendas in hand a lot now. Uh, I've got at least five points of agendas in hand. And uh, I'm kind of feeling the pressure there. I think I may be rushing it a little bit. I'm not sure if 
that's the best play. But HQ is becoming increasingly vulnerable. If I can get a Nisei scored, at the very least it gives me extra Siphon Protection, I could score out another Nisei potentially and kind of chain them Astra Script style. Um, we'll see. It, it's going to be interesting here. He's certainly not short on the cash, even you know with security testing shut down. Data suck is effectively shut down as well. Um, but he's got one one counter on it, and you know maybe a purge virus counter isn't the worst thing after I've scored this agenda. Just slow him right down, keep the HQ that little bit more secure. Problem is my economy is not really that solid, so he's going to inside job uh, the remote after having. I'm not sure where he ran, to be honest, on uh, on central, but I'm, I'm sure he did. Uh, so I will res the Eli and the Caprice, which obviously means I have to trash the one on HQ. Uh, so that cost me five. Uh, he will then presumably click click. Oh no, he gets past it because of inside job. Sorry, I've only res one piece of ice because I can only really afford to. So side game. Oh uh, yeah, of course he did. Uh, so he successfully beats my Psy game, at which point I will res the Ash. Uh, I know he can get he can get in here, um, but at the same time, I might as well make him pay for it. Uh, he has to beat the Trace in order to be able to access all the cards. He's still got two clicks left, so he doesn't have to necessarily, but he might as well. He's already there, so he will meet the Trace. I've put all my money into it. He will score the... Uh, the Nisei, and he will then look to trash both assets, or both upgrades, sorry, I should say. So it cost him a fortune to get it, um, but at the same time he's got all that money waiting for him on Katie Jones. All I could really do there is make it more expensive. I was kind of hoping to keep him out with the uh, Caprice. But that's the risk with Caprice. Sometimes she's your friend, other times she is not. And in that instance, she was certainly not. But a good play. A very good play there. I'm not sure. Maybe the best play there was to not even bother resing the Eli. Uh, just res the Caprice and, and hope for the best with inside job. Uh, probably wasn't worth spending the money on, that's for sure. So I'm going to install. And uh, take some money. And now I've got I've got issues, there's <laughs> no denying that. And uh, that Eli is not long for this world. With only two credits and that kind of level of, uh, of Katie Jones. Yeah, that's intimidating. Because I know I've got more in HQ. And I'm not sure what's going to slow him down here. I really needed to score that initial Nisei. Get an end the run in stop those key legwork attacks or the uh, or key siphons or even like I say just score out another agenda so he is going to take the money off Katie he is going to special order presumably for a, uh, a corroder unless he's got a morning star in there in which case he's laughing but I'd be surprised Oh, he's giving it some thought. Maybe he's looking at considering breach. I'm not, I don't know. Maybe he's got a breach in the deck. We'll see. Soon see. Oh, it's Mick. Okay. Interesting. I guess he's hurting for, for not having seen a fairy yet. Though, again, that, that's a surprise. So the Mimic's on the board, as long as the Passport. Those are his two breakers. And uh, I guess he's just a little bit concerned here about potential Kamainu, Sarugi, all the ice that could do him some damage that unfortunately I didn't see. That really would have been good early doors, unfortunately wasn't to be. And now having gone through two Caprice and an Ash, I don't know if I can keep him out here. Still plenty of money as well. So he's going to run HQ. I'm not in a position to res the outermost piece of ice. He'll use the data sucker token to uh, pop off the Eli and he will access and now I'm in all kinds of trouble and uh, there's number Nisei number two Nisei mark two number two and uh, I'm gonna res the mental health clinic end of his turn and draw seeing a toll booth <laughs> which is about as much use 
as a chocolate teapot, really. As you much use as a cat flap in an elephant house at this stage in the game, because I am skint. So I'm just taking three credits, I think, here, because I don't have a great deal of choice. I suspect, you know, he's going to go in and trash the uh, mental health clinic without question. Certainly would make sense for him to do that. He's got enough money. Start building Katie again. He's in a good place. And uh, if he leg works me again, think a hair against the uh, HQ, this could be a very, very short game. Or short turn. So, first turn. First click, sorry. He, uh, is he accessing HQ? Yep, he is. So, he's uh, doing an HQ run. No, he's not. Pass. Not sure what he did there first turn. He is. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, there is Nichi on HQ. So obviously you can use the Data Sacker and Mimic to break. A bit bad times there. Bad timing on my part. Again, the Itchy into Eli would have been quite strong. Better the other way around, probably. But I've seen a lot of ice here that I don't particularly want on my centrals all the time. Would have, say, far preferred to see things like Kaminus, Enigmas, Sarugis, anything like that. And uh, things that are really taxing that he either has to A, Parasite, or B, uh, get through with uh, a lot of money with Mimic. So here comes the legwork. So he will do the same thing again. He'll use the Data Sucker token. He'll access three cards. And I've got five, so he will see a snare which I can't trigger because I have no money. He will see another snare which I can't trigger because I have no money. He'll see an ash. I think I had a lucky escape there. I'm pretty sure the other two cards there are rejectors. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I guess how you look at it, like it would have been quite nice to uh, kill him stone dead there with uh, with a double a double snare. But I mean, I doubt he would have done that in the event of a double snare. So he will go in again, see the uh, the NAPD contract, and take it for four. He's skint now, but is it too little too late? He's only got three credits on him. He'll go again and see the toll booth that is next to useless. He's on six points. I'm on a grand total of nothing. And, uh, you know, as useful as mental health clinic is, it's not going to dig me out of this hole here. Sunju would have been perfect, and that's all I can really do at this stage, is just take money and pass the turn back over to him. And uh, all he really has to do here is run R&D, click, click, and have a look. Uh, which is exactly what he's doing. Exactly the right call. Uh, so he will see a Caprice Nisei. And I've got to keep him out here because, again, he only has top deck one agenda. He's won the game. Um, and I lock him out. So it cost me three, but hey. Better than a poke in the eye of the sharp stick. So he will put three on KT and then he'll pass the turn. So that's not too bad. Hopefully that's a little bit more secure now that uh, the Caprice and the uh, Eli are rezzed. I've got to keep him out of R&D now. There's no uh, no other way around it. Particularly because I know the snare's gone. Not a lot of point letting him in. Oh, again, he's very careful not to uh, drop down below three cards. Just in case there's something nasty waiting. As was the case in the previous cast, in fact. So again, he's playing fast and loose here. He knows, well, not loose, rather, I should say. He's playing a very tight game, but uh, he's putting all the money on KT. He's uh, got a nice rig out. Uh, all he's missing is the barrier breaker. And uh, obviously, he doesn't really need it. He can just click, click through the Eli's if need be. I've run up into another NAPD contract there, uh, which is really not what I want to see. But at this stage, I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. Uh, I think he's going to be going through one way or the other. He can get through to HQ for three credits, obviously two effectively with the Desperado on the board. And that's not taxing. Not anywhere near taxing enough. And I just really haven't seen much ice in this game. All my early doors ice. So he's going to legwork uh, for two. Uh, he's going to pay. He's going to access three cards and one of them is the game winning agenda. So here we go. He'll see a toll booth. He'll see a celebrity gift. Ow! Oh, and he'll see a Kaminu. There's the ice. And the one remaining face down card. Yeah, you betcha. It's an NAPD contract. So that was very unlucky there. Uh, but that is the power of legwork. That certainly, certainly should have been the game to him there. And uh, I was very fortunate to escape. And now I'm seeing all my ice. A little bit late. 
But uh, there it all is. There it all is. So, I mean, celebrity gift here is pretty much all I can do because I need to dig myself out of the hole. So I'm going to do that. I drew, and now I'm going to show him five, including an agenda, and uh, four pieces of ice. So two pups, which again is fine if I put one on R&D, maybe one on HQ. It's enough at this point because he's not exactly flush with cash. Now I am. Beautiful. He probably should have gone and trashed the mental health clinic as well, I think, a while back. You know, I've certainly gained a good amount off that. And now it's just a question of, can I get my head above water and start clawing this back? <laughs> clawing it back. Six to nothing. I'm not, not fancying my chances, but... Who knows? Certainly that NAPD contract's going to be difficult to steal with only six credits and zero on Kate Jones. Uh, but I haven't got any Caprice Nise love to uh, to keep him out, or any Ash. And so it's just a question here now of what can I do, and what does he want to do? I think he's got to start building up his economy game, and that's exactly what he's going to do. So he's dirty laundering. Uh, I'm guessing he's dirty laundering HQ. Would make sense. He knows there's an agenda there. Um, no, maybe not. Maybe it was archives. Past. Not sure there. Why he didn't? Unless it was a a security testing run on archives, which would make sense. So he gained a lot of money for that with the dirty laundry. So I'm going to stick those pups out there for sure. Um, because it makes sense. Again, I've got to keep the central secure here still. Any one access, he could win the game. And, uh, but his money situation is much, much improved now. And getting that kind of cash off one run. It's very difficult to stop. Looks like he's seen a siphon there. I think that's pretty much one of the first ones he's seen, in fact. In that, is that two in a row? Uh, oh no, it's a shutdown. So he'll play a ferry and he'll tap Katie for three and then pass the turn over to me. I'll get one for Mental Health Clinic and a mandatory draw. So loads of ice. I've got to start going for it now, surely. This is the time. This is the time. I have got to just go for it here and start trying to score agendas. I'm going to install another remote. I'm not sure if that's a Sunju or another Mental Health Clinic. Probably a Mental Health Clinic. And another piece of ice there on top of that remote. Just to stop him from getting cheeky, I'm going to res the Sunju. So pay two, gain two immediately, because of good old replicating perfection. And uh, I'm just trying to give him a little bit of time compression here, make him, make him work. He's got to make the decision now as to whether to let me have three credits a turn or whether he wants to uh, just put pressure on the centrals and try and score the game-winning agenda. I'm starting to feel like maybe there's a way back, and Siphon, that could certainly cause a problem. Uh, particularly because I'm pretty sure it's a pup there on HQ, which I may as well... Re oh, it's a Kamaidu! Uh, you see? Uh, but I think he's only got three cards in hand. Four, maybe. So it's taxing, but again, it's a bit late, unfortunately, for the taxing game. It needed to be in a lot earlier than it was. But it's obviously he'll pay to get through that, and he'll pay to get through the Itchy with the Data Sucker Token and Mimic. And uh, he will be able to siphon me, take off 5, gain 10, 2 tags. He's not too worried about his Katie Jones at this stage. If he can siphon me repeatedly, then uh, I'm in all kinds of trouble. And certainly I would imagine the next clicks would be spent trashing the assets. He can't let me get ahead of, of him and economically, even after a siphon. I've only got 5 credits there, I think. Uh, he's got 2 tags. And I say, pretty much now, I don't, I don't think he'll bother clearing the tags, it's not worth it. Got the money. Will he go in and trash the assets? Certainly think you've got to trash the, the Sunju, I, I don't think there's much choice there. Whether he trashes the mental health clinic is uh, a debatable one. Depends on whether he wanted Siphon for his economy or to worsen mine. Or both. So he's going to inside job the remote server and see if he can get in here. There's a good chance that he may. Because I'm not sure what I've put here in front. 
Again, this is the kind of game I really wanted to see in Azumas. Just to put him in front of the Eli's with the passport, obviously on the board, he would have had to have gone in and got uh, and you know got his yog or anything of that description with data sucker tokens. He's got no easy data sucker targets. I could have cleared virus characters and really started securing my board position, um, but now I'm in a real economic pit. I think I may have put that toll booth on the remote uh, somewhat foolhardily. Nope, it's a pup. Pup, pup. Pay two. No res. Access. Game. And again, I think there was very little I could do there. I was actually kind of hoping for a flat line win, I think. I think I was hoping to score the Philotic Entanglement and him having to have two cards in hand and win the match. But uh, that may have been a small pipe dream, I would suggest, at this stage. But uh, it's one of those little cheeky flat lines that no one necessarily sees coming with three agendas scored on the board. Uh, it's even better, obviously, with the one-pointers. But even in a deck like this, it can sometimes catch people off uh, by surprise. And I kind of felt like... That was my probably sole remaining play at this stage. He was all over me. So split the game. My first loss of the day. So I can't complain too much. But uh, go on now to the final round of Swiss. 4 for 1. and uh, Sorry, 5 for 1. Very happy place. In the meantime, uh, do please uh, visit us over at netrunners.co.uk for forums, articles and more. We hope to uh, see you there as well as for round 4.